threading your machine seems complicated at first, but I promise you in no time you'll be able to do it with your eyes closed. I swear. So today I'm going to show you the difference between a current and a vintage machine and how to thread both of them. So regardless of what kind of a machine you have, your bases are covered. Okay, let's get started. All right, everybody, I promised you this one's going to be easy. So we're going to learn how to thread the machine. All right. And I want you to know that a lot of times when you get um, thread, there will be plastic on there. I try and take that off because I find that if I can take it off and just kind of rub my, my fingers around it, then I get a lot of the stickiness off. Today we're working with a upright spool pin. Now they can be both vertical as well as horizontal so this is obviously the vertical the important thing to know about the vertical is that when you put your thread on everything runs more fluidly if the thread is running counterclockwise so if i pull my thread the spool top will be running counterclockwise so keep that in mind all right you guys there are similarities with almost all sewing machines so it's really rare to come across one that doesn't have these similarities so the first thing that you're going to see is a stabilizing space or a hook that brings your thread into alignment and it's going to run you through a s curve of sorts so what we're going to do is we're going to take our thread down and we're going to bring it swing it to the left and up and at this point you're looking for a hook and this one is really important because if you don't get it in this hook you're going to have a total knot of thread when you start sewing so to find that second hook you are going to bring your hand wheel towards you and for my Kenmore which is my first sewing child um, it this hook comes out of its spacing now they don't all do that some of them stay nestled in and this is the trick once you get that hook up into the highest place possible you are going to swing your thread from the right all the way back and to the left and it will nestle right into that hook whether it's up high or down low that hook it will find its place okay now we're going to bring the thread down the same way we just came up all right so we brought that thread down and now it's time to thread it through the eye of the needle you notice i gave it a nice cut and i typically try to cut at an angle because you'll find that you are able to thread it a little bit better the other thing you can do is get real close with it and give it a little kiss all right and if you didn't see that i licked my fingers i know it sounds gross but it works okay so what we're going to do is we're going to thread the needle going from the front to back always always from the front to back so i love putting my finger behind the needle because i can actually see the thread coming through and i can grab it a little bit better all right so one thing you want to look at is on a presser foot there's a little split in the middle like a fork in a presser foot what we want is we want that thread going right through the fork and running out the back now one final thing that I want you to do is you'll always find there's a little metal spacing down here it could be over here it could be over here it doesn't matter every machine is a little bit different but what you want to do is you want to get your thread tucked right behind there because it keeps your thread in alignment parallel alignment with the needle now I'm going to tell you a trick I do this last because what I found is if I do this before I thread the needle I tend to find that my my thread gets wrapped around the needle and that is a no-no so in order to get it behind there I usually treat it like I'm flossing my teeth and I just tuck it right behind there all right you're good to go Okay, so we're going to go back in time a little bit. Ooh, this will be fun. This vintage sewing machine actually belonged to my husband's grandmother, and I think it is so cool, and it still sews like a dream. It's heavier than you could ever even imagine. It is just a rock star in the sewing machine world. So widening the bobbin and inserting the bobbin into the bobbin casing are similar with vintage machines as well as current machines, um, but Threading the machine is a little bit different. So we're going to get up close and personal with our vintage singer. And in no time, you are going to know how to do it yourself. 
All right, everybody, I already have us started on this machine. So you can see I have my thread on the spool pin and I have it following the thread guide. Now the difference is the thread guide is now on the outside rather than the inside. And that's kind of the big difference between vintage machines and newer machines is everything is external rather than internal, which is not a bad thing. All right, so for my particular machine, I start my thread guide here. I go down through this spacing. There's a little kind of um, metal hook that I can put that into and through here. Now this is where I really want to get up close and personal so that you can see what's going on. We are going to talk about the tension knob, okay? Because that's external. All right, so now we're up close and personal with the thread tension dial. And the difference is our thread tension dial is on the outside and we actually have to wrap our thread through it. Normally when we have a newer machine, what we do is we just bring it through our S curve and we never see the thread tension dial. So that's the only thing that really makes it different than the modern machines. So what you're gonna do, so you've got your threads going through these thread guides and we're gonna go ahead and bring it around and the thread needs to be nestled in to these plates that are nestled in the thread guides. All right, so I'm gonna see how I have this coming up through. What I wanna do is I wanna just maybe provide a little tension to my thread and give it a, a little pull. And what just happened is the thread went from behind to the front of the thread tension guide. All right, now I'm just gonna keep on going through my thread guides same exact thing as before i have my hook that i'm going to thread and this one you just actually have to thread it through a big eye all right now it's coming back down more thread guides it's really not that hard kind of simple okay what do you think we're going to do now guys let's do it let's thread the eye of the needle put it through the back and then last thing you know i like to do this last to put that thread in the final thread guide so that it's parallel with the eye of the needle and it's running out the back.